It's the world's first sixth-generation aircraft, a remarkable feat of engineering and manufacturing that promises to strike any target anywhere in the world. It's the B-21 Raider, and on December 2, 2022, the United States officially revealed its next strategic bomber to the world. On November 23, 1988, the United States Air Force officially revealed the world's first stealth bomber. While the F-117 had already been flying for years prior to this, the B-2 was a seismic shift in aircraft design and capability. This bomber cut an impressive and intimidating figure as it rolled out of its classified hangar. Unlike the F-117, the B-2 was a sleek, almost organic-looking aircraft with a fraction of the radar return of the Nighthawk. Its advanced radar deflecting design made possible by dramatic improvements in computing. Advances in radar-absorbing materials also made the B-2 significantly stealthier than the F-117, and thanks to a tailless design, its classified radar cross-section is known to be smaller than even the younger, more agile F-22. At its official reveal ceremony, Air Force Secretary Edward C. Aldridge Jr. commented, We are not just rolling out America's newest strategic bomber, we are ushering in a new age of strategic deterrence. The B-2 was an aircraft built specifically to fight the most terrible of wars, an airplane designed for the apocalypse itself with a mission to penetrate deep into Soviet territory and destroy Soviet nuclear missiles and command posts before they could be fired at the United States and its allies. In the words of Secretary Aldridge, it is America's enduring hope and prayer that this magnificent aircraft will never fly in anger. The B-2 would, in fact, fly in anger, though thankfully it never undertook the very mission it was designed for. Now, nearly 40 years later, the B-2 is passing the torch, but the B-21 isn't just an upgrade from the venerable B-2 stealth bomber, an aircraft that remains in a league completely of its own. It's a seismic shift in air power. Details on the B-21 are highly classified, but some capabilities of the aircraft are known or can be extrapolated from analysis of Air Force requests over the years as the B-21 took shape. The name Raider comes from the famous Doolittle Raid in World War II. Shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States was rallying for war, but morale was severely impacted by the stunning surprise attack that crippled the Pacific Fleet. In order to raise fighting spirits, the United States launched a top-secret raid against Japan itself. The raid was fraught with incredible risk, and there were many that opposed it from conception. It required 16 B-25 Mitchell medium bombers to be retrofitted for launch from an aircraft carrier, meaning that a great deal of their self-defense equipment and other pieces of hardware had to be scrapped to make the planes light enough to launch from the limited deck space. The planes would in effect be almost defenseless against Japanese fighters and carry only a small payload, a purely symbolic gesture that would have no effect on Japan's warfighting capability. But the greatest risk was the loss of the USS Hornet, one of the Navy's few aircraft carriers and a critically needed resource to defend against further Japanese attacks in the Pacific. In order to get close enough to launch the 16 bombers, the Hornet would have to get very close to the Japanese islands, putting the entire task force at serious risk. However, despite causing only moderate damage in Tokyo and the surrounding areas, the Doolittle Raid caused U.S. fighting spirit to soar while demoralizing Japanese citizens who realized the U.S. Navy could hold their home islands at threat. The B-21 Raider takes inspiration from the Doolittle Raid in one specific area, the ability to hold any target anywhere in the world at threat. And at its unveiling ceremony, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin hinted at one of the B-21's most significant capabilities. While the B-2 remains a daunting threat to any nation's air defense network, it has one glaring the Achilles heel. The B-21 is set aircraft to change requires all that. logistical support to penetrate deep and enemy territory. Its unfueled range is just over 6,000 nautical miles, likely less than that when it's loaded with heavy ordnance. This is fine for penetrating into Soviet airspace over the North Pole from bases in Alaska, but a significant problem for America's biggest modern strategic challenge, deterring Chinese aggression in the South Pacific. In defense of Taiwan, the United States would have to fly the B-2 from airfields well outside the range of Chinese ballistic missiles. Airfields in Japan and South Korea are all under threat from Chinese short- and medium-range ballistic missiles, while Guam is under threat from China's longest-range ballistic missiles. Realistically, the B-2 would be able to fly from friendly airfields in Australia, or more likely, the continental U.S. itself. This is not unprecedented, as the B-2 undertook many bombing missions against Iraq's military from inside the continental U.S. in the past. But herein lies the B-2's vulnerability. The aircraft requires in-air refueling to accomplish these tasks. 
While the US Air Force is well equipped for the mission, with the largest tanker fleet in the world, the tankers themselves are a dead giveaway to any enemy with long-range detection capabilities. While the B-2 may be extremely difficult to spot on radar, its tanker supports are not, and a sophisticated opponent such as China could likely predict the general flight path of a B-2 with careful monitoring of US tankers in case of war. The B-21 is set to change all that. While giving no specific details on range or capabilities, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin specifically mentioned at the reveal ceremony that the B-21 can hold any target anywhere in the world at threat with no logistical support. This is a significant capability and strongly hints that the B-21 will be able to fly from safe U.S. airfields far outside the range of enemy ballistic missiles to strike at targets without giving up its presence by requiring direct tanker support en route. It's believed the aircraft will achieve this incredible capability by fielding much better engines than its predecessor, with specific comments by Secretary Austin that the B-21's engines were extremely efficient. This would go in hand with reports over the last five years that the B-21 was having setbacks due to engine design, with manufacturer Pratt & Whitney raising specific issues with the design team or air intake. In order to maximize stealth and defeat enemy infrared weapons and sensors, stealth bombers place their air intakes on the dorsal side of the aircraft rather than the ventral like a traditional aircraft. The engine cowlings themselves also need to be very specifically designed to minimize any possibility of radar waves being bounced off and back to the receiver. Indeed, if you look at the intakes of the engines on the B-21, you can see just how much smaller they are in comparison to the B-2. But stealth means less airflow which means less efficiency, and this becomes a critical concern when the aircraft is believed to fly in excess of 60,000 feet. Flying an estimated 10,000 feet higher than the B-2 makes the B-21 harder to spot, harder for missiles to maneuver for a hit, and more efficient to fly, as it experiences much less air resistance due to the thinning atmosphere, which in turn means a much greater range. But a thin atmosphere also means less oxygen for combustion, which normally necessitates larger air intakes. How the B-21 managed to solve this paradox remains unknown, but the U.S. Secretary of Defense was confident in boldly proclaiming the B-21 would be able to hit anywhere in the world without obvious logistical support. What this likely translates to is that the B-21 will indeed be able to strike targets from airfields outside the range of China's ballistic missiles, but will likely need to link up with a tanker on the leg back home, at which point the mission will be accomplished so stealth is no longer important. Speaking of stealth, the B-21 is set to change the stealth game as we know it. Here details are so classified that if we knew specifics, our challenge guy's next challenge would be surviving Guantanamo Bay. However, while the US will likely never reveal any details on the B-21 stealth features, indeed, in nearly 40 years, it hasn't shared so much as a sentence on the B-2's own characteristics. What we do know is that the new bomber enjoys almost four decades of advancements in material science and computing over the B-2. The stealth coating on the skin of America's stealth aircraft have all been evolving over the years. Not content with the progress they've made so far, U.S. defense firms have continued to advance material science to provide ever more capable stealth coatings for U.S. stealth fleets. The B-2 of today is significantly stealthier than when it first took flight, but without rebuilding each airframe from scratch, its fundamental upper limit on stealth capabilities has a hard ceiling due to the very materials it's built from and how they're manufactured. It's believed that today's stealth materials on the B-2 can absorb up to 90% of electromagnetic energy, and the B-21 might be able to surpass that. Secretary of Defense Austin was confident in the B-21 stealth, remarking that even the most sophisticated air defense systems would struggle to threaten the Raider. However, they may not have to if the aircraft is simply too expensive to even fly more than select missions. And this might just be the most revolutionary feature of the B-21. It is cheap. Well, cheap compared to the B-2. The U.S. military has refused to comment on the cost of the B-21 as it prepares to begin procurement starting in the mid-2020s. However, the aircraft has a must-not-exceed price of around $600 million, meaning the Air Force has set a very hard limit on just how much it'll pay Northrop Grumman for each airframe. By comparison, after adjusting for inflation in R&D, the B-2 today would cost a whopping $4 billion per airframe. A lot of capability for an absolutely insane price. Like the B-2, the U.S. Air Force plans to buy over 100 of these aircraft. However, unlike the B-2, the Air Force actually means it this time. The B-2, like the F-22, was a victim of its own success. The aircraft was so capable that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was simply no need for it. 
Thus, the Air Force slashed its order down to just under two dozen airframes. Today, though, the threat of war with China in the Pacific is not just likely but almost certain, and the U.S. once more has a great need for a large fleet of very sophisticated aircraft. China has adopted a strategic doctrine of anti-access area denial with the express purpose of not defeating the U.S. military but simply making the cost to operate within the sphere of China's regional strategic goals too high to bear. Legacy bombers such as the B-52 and B-1 Lancer are simply too vulnerable to Chinese air defenses, and America's fleet of B-2s are too few in number to effectively deter China. That's why the U.S. Air Force wants a significant quantity of B-21s, at least 100 of them, in order to create a credible deterrent. Purchasing the aircraft in such a large quantity will make the B-21 far more affordable than the B-2 ever was, allowing for economy of scale to kick in. For anyone unfamiliar with the concept, economy of scale means it's cheaper to build large amounts of a good rather than small quantities, as production processes become more refined and efficient over time and development costs are spread out over a large number of purchases. This was the original dream of the B-2, until the Soviet Union made the mistake of allowing its Eastern Bloc allies to start wearing Levi jeans and watch Knight Rider, leading to the entire communist experiment collapsing in on itself a few years later. The B-2 is an absolute princess, costing the U.S. Air Force a truly criminal amount of money to operate and maintain. The aircraft is so delicate that it needs its own specialized air-conditioned hangar when deployed outside the United States. And while details remain classified, it's believed that just to get it off the ground, the U.S. Air Force has to give it the you is kind, you is important speech from the help. The B-21 is designed to be far more robust and capable with Secretary Austin promising that the aircraft is the most maintainable bomber ever built. U.S. Air Force mechanics would be right to be skeptical of the claim, as stealth aircraft are notoriously delicate and require intensive and costly maintenance to operate. This is largely due to the special stealth coating, with current stealth fighters limited to only short supersonic sprints under threat of burning off their stealth coatings. Advancements in stealth coatings, though, make the B-21 much more robust, and indeed there are rumors of a brand new stealth coating developed recently that is not only cheap but much easier to apply to aircraft even when deployed in austere conditions. The B-21's greatest strength, however, might come from its adaptability. Starting in the early 2000s, the United States military identified a key deficiency in its weapons acquisitions programs. Simply put, technology was evolving so fast that by the time a weapon system went from initial proposal to operational status, a process that could take decades for things such as aircraft, many of the elements of said weapon system would be obsolete or significantly behind current tech. This would leave U.S. forces vulnerable to enemy systems more recently acquired than its own, and is a fundamental reason why the F-22 is being retired so early. To solve this problem, the U.S. adopted an open architecture design philosophy, which meant that future combat systems would need to be designed in a way that individual components could be replaced over the system's lifetime. The F-22, for example, has many avionics that are quickly falling behind. But due to the way the aircraft was designed, it's either impossible or simply too expensive to replace them with modern systems. The B-21 averts this problem by being built from the ground up with open architecture in mind, allowing the stealth bomber to remain extremely relevant for decades to come and overcoming a huge limiting factor of the current B-2 bomber. This is not the only modern warfighting doctrine that the B-21 was built to adopt, however. To combat future threats, the U.S. has evolved its Cold War-era airland battle doctrine to all domain operations. The old air land battle doctrine combined air assets with ground forces to conduct deep penetrating strikes directly at the enemy's rear areas and command posts, throwing the enemy forces into disarray which could be exploited by aggressive ground forces. Designed to counter Soviet doctrine of fielding overwhelming numbers, air land battle exploited the heavy top-down command structure of the Soviet Union to sever units from higher command and proved to be one of the most decisive military doctrines in history when the U.S. military and its partners dismembered Iraq's massive military in Desert Storm at a truly negligible cost to friendly forces. All domain battle is the natural evolution of air land battle and proposes that the U.S. forces operate across all domains simultaneously to create conundrums for the enemy and exploit the opportunities they present. By engaging an enemy across land, air, sea, subsea, space, and cyberspace, enemy forces are forced to defend against all domains simultaneously, likely leading to defeats in at least one which can be quickly and savagely exploited. The B-21 is designed to seamlessly integrate into future battle plans by being a multi-role platform, a capability which no previous bomber has ever matched. 
Not only is the B-21 capable of performing strategic bombing in heavily contested battle spaces, but the aircraft can also be used as an intelligence gathering platform. To create a more robust battle network, the B-21 can also act as a battle management tool, creating resiliency for U.S. forces as U.S. assets are increasingly attrited in combat operations. The bomber will even be able to guide other aircraft or ground force weapons to their targets, essentially acting like a forward observer from behind enemy lines, a daunting proposition for any adversary. The Raider also has the capability of integrating directly with allied forces, meaning that it won't just be guiding U.S. weapons to targets, but those of its allies and partners as well. This is a truly formidable capability, given that the true strength of the United States military is not its own might, but the fact that no matter where in the world it fights, it's going to bring a lot more friends to that fight than any adversary. Integrating those forces, however, has always been a challenge, and the B-21 promises to not just be lethal on its own, but greatly enhance the lethality of America's allies and partners. Like in 1988, it's America's sincerest hope that the B-21 never fly in anger. The greatest value that the United States could gain from this astonishing feat of engineering is not the destruction it can wreak on enemy forces, but preventing a conflict from ever arising in the first place. In the words of Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, we are again making it plain to any potential foe, the risks and costs of aggression far outweigh any conceivable gain. Now go check out why does the B-2 stealth bomber cost $2 billion, or click this other video instead.